Earlier this week, I made this video talking about the current state of nuclear energy in the Netherlands. We have one small reactor at Boslo, which is about 500 megawatts. It's not too bad, but you know, it's aging and people are saying, well, it's expensive and we don't like it. But the question is, does the Dutch people really like nuclear energy or not? And it turns out that the answer is much more nuanced than I initially thought. I thought that many more people would be anti-nuclear. In fact, I thought that it would be about 60 or 70 percent anti-nuclear, but it turns out that the story is different. So the ball began rolling when the party leader of the VVD, when he said that nuclear energy is necessary to combat climate change, even in the Netherlands. And this landed him on national television, naturally, and it sparked a debate. So some newspapers and some radio stations started polling people and the results are encouraging, but not really, I don't know, it doesn't make me confident. It doesn't give me the sense that we are going to build nuclear power plants within the next five years or so. I, I doubt it. So here's the thing. So first, a national radio program polled some people, about 1,870 people voted and 67% turned out to be in favor of nuclear energy, which was a great success. But the question is whether, you know, the sample size is big enough. Um, I've been asking my friends to vote, of course. So maybe the results are a little bit skewed. Um, and then one of the newspapers asked Maurice de Hond, who is, a, who is basically the pollster of the Netherlands, to, um, to poll the Dutch people to see whether they are in favor or not in favor of nuclear energy. And it turns out that about 46% of all Dutch people are in favor of nuclear energy. Now, hold on. This doesn't mean that 54% uh, is against nuclear energy. No, 14% is basically uh, hanging in the balance, uh, unsure about it, and only 40% is against nuclear energy. It's still a lot of people. But in any case, uh, there is support for nuclear energy in the Netherlands. Now, does that mean that we will be building a nuclear power plant anytime soon? Um, this is a difficult question. Uh, so right at this moment, we have what people call a climate commission. And these are people who are sitting on a round table and they are trying to figure out what the best course for the Netherlands would be. Now, the person who, who chairs this committee is a, and, <clears throat> and this is very strange. His name is Diederik Samson. And he is a nuclear engineer by training turned anti-nuke. So in all likelihood, he is not going to pursue the nuclear option. In fact, uh, if I'm correct, nuclear has never ever been discussed as a valid option. Some people might have, you know, say it passingly, like, well, perhaps we should consider nuclear, but it seems that most of the people just straight out of hand ignore it or choose to, you know, say, well, we're not really interested in nuclear. Um, so the VVD is largely in favor of nuclear. I believe that 74% or 75, about three quarters of their base is pro-nuclear. So I think that they are going to become my party in the next election rounds, which is going to be three or four years later. They are they are already the biggest uh, the biggest uh, <clears throat> the biggest party in the Netherlands. But my party, the Democrat sixty six, they are against nuclear. While Maurice de Hond has polled has polled also people from a political standpoint and turns out that 50% of the people who are uh, uh, <clears throat> turns out that 50% of the people who vote for a Democrat 66 are actually in favor of nuclear. This doesn't necessarily mean that 50% is against, it's probably a lower number, but it's encouraging. I mean, I'm not alone. 
the Democrat 66 are um, pretty progressive party. Uh, I like them a lot, mainly because of their stance on uh, health care and education. Those are the two main issues I would usually vote on. Um, that's because my wife works in healthcare and I, and I believe that my children deserve the highest quality education that there is. So those are two issues that lie very close to me. But nuclear energy supersedes everything. Um, I, I, I believe that the Netherlands, which is a small country with only like 16 or 17 million people, uh, but is one of the richest and one of the most technologically advanced countries on the, on the planet. And I believe, I, I honestly believe that we should step up our game. We do have nuclear scientists in the Netherlands. We have NRG, which has a, a, a nuclear testing facility in Patton with a high flux reactor. They can do all sorts of diagnostics and, and tests and whatnot to, you know, further the knowledge about nuclear, nuclear science. They also create a medical isotope. So, but we also have Urenco, um, which is basically one of the biggest uranium enrichers on the planet. And we have uh, one tiny little uh, power reactor in Zeeland. And don't forget, and before I forget, we have one research reactor in Delft, which basically lies within the most densely populated area of the Netherlands. It's smack dab in the middle of a city, basically. Um, yeah, that's a research reactor, and there's a university there, the Technical University of Delft. So we do have some nuclear expertise, and it's ongoing, and nobody is, nobody is working to shut them down, you know, say for some environmental lunatics, but we are doing some stuff. But I, I believe that we as Dutch people, with our, with our wealth and our technical proficiency, should bear a broader share of the burden. So what do I mean by that? Right now our electricity is pretty dirty. So we get a lot of electricity from gas and coal actually. I believe that it's somewhere around 75 or 80 percent. Five percent of our electricity comes from the from the little uh, nuclear reactor and then there's somewhere between five and ten percent which comes from renewable. But don't forget, some of that is biomass. So to say that it's all solar and wind, that it, that is stretching it. But I'll put some figures up later on, right here, which will prove that my figures were either exaggerated or underrated. So in any case, um, we need to invest in new infrastructure. We need to invest in new generation capacity. And the question is, what will that be? Uh, some people say, well, all we need to do is build wind and solar and all will be fine. And perhaps that might be possible. I mean, it's 17 million people, it's not a lot, but we are a high energy per capita uh, country. And um, if you look at, for instance, Denmark, which is often touted as one of the successes of renewable energy, they actually get a lot of their electricity from gas. And um, they are only like six or seven million people. Same goes for Scotland, which is a very windy place, but still gets their electricity from England and from uh, their own gas and coal-fired power plants. <clears throat> so it's not as straightforward as you think. It's not like let's slap enough of this X and Y technology on there and everything will be all right. What we need to do is come up with a comprehensive plan to make nuclear be a part of the solution. Uh, the, VVD is, the VVD is vouching for that, but at this moment, most of their uh, propositions are being pushed off the table by the Partei van de Arbeid, which is one of the which is one of the most anti-nuclear parties in the Netherlands. They're even more anti-nuclear than Groenlinks, which is basically the Green Party. Um, so in a political sense, yes, the figures are good. Enough people are in support of nuclear to warrant at least a discussion. But the political parties, they are 
not really you know there's this there's this division you know we don't have a strong division our our, our government is basically a a, cent, a central left right leaning government so it's always kind of balanced between left and right sometimes it leans more left sometimes it leans more right but it's never skewed over to one side and what we see is that the most right-leaning parties are pro-nuclear and that the left-leaning parties are slightly if not entirely anti-nuclear so it's very hard to get a consensus on, on nuclear because one big party might be pro and one big par party might be anti and you know there's always a third party in there in the mix in order to maintain uh, a, a balance because we have coalitions and um, this means that you know you can't ever get 100% support for nuclear in any case so it's going to be difficult to get nuclear into the discussion to get nuclear into the political discussion it's already part of the public discussion which is pretty neat if you ask me because I mean nuclear hasn't been part of the discussion for years and years and years I mean we've been ignoring nuclear forever basically and that's one of the problems as well because the party I voted for the Democrat 66 they actually say well there's no part there's no market forces that have ever you know said we want to build a nuclear reactor in the Netherlands and that's not so strange because it was a never an option we always were saying that we <clears throat> we were always saying that we would be doing other stuff most of most of the time like most of the time energy wasn't really that big of an issue if we were talking about emissions we were talking about you know slowing cars down from 120 kilometers per hour to 100 kilometers per hour and thus lowering their emissions but nobody ever talked about the high share of gas and coal-fired power plants that we have um, so this in the Netherlands is a relatively new discussion it's a new movement it has been broiling and you know working its way up since the late 2010s 20 you know since 2010 basically before that you know not a lot of people were talking about sustainable energy and it was never a big big issue so nuclear energy might get a chance in the Netherlands but in order for it to succeed we need to beat the drum of nuclear at this moment so and to come back to the Democrat 66 issue um, saying that nobody is interested in building a nuclear reactor in the Netherlands well that's not so strange if you generally have an anti-nuclear sentiment and when you have all your eggs in your basket I mean we have plenty of energy we rarely experience any blackouts in the Netherlands I mean we just build over capacity up the wazoo and you know whenever something goes wrong somewhere we can fix it pretty fast and not a lot of bad things happen to our electricity grid so we don't get a lot of blackouts we don't get a lot of brownouts and um, nobody has ever said well let's consider nuclear and you know when we did that in the past that was always you know some kind of balloon air hot air balloon that was just put up into the air and everybody would laugh and say nah that's never going to happen here and I'm afraid that that's going to happen again but here's the thing if you say if you as a, as a government say well we are consider we are considering nuclear seriously and we want options companies are going to knock on your door and say listen we have a product and we want to sell this product to the Netherlands or you know we have a design and you you can have this design if you pay us an X amount of money for the IP and you can build the reactor or you can build a facility that can build the reactors but it's a question of the chicken and the egg you know which one comes first well in this case I believe that the Netherlands the, the in this in this case I believe that the Netherlands should um, at least the government should say listen we are open to nuclear please give us information um, 
you know, let's let's see what we can get. Let's see, let's see, because most of the people say, well, listen, these are the kinds of reactors that we can build. And that's it. So most of the people are thinking about the AP1000 and the AP EPR at this moment. Wow. I mean, if I was in the government, I would say, why not talk to the Koreans? I mean, South Korea has an excellent nuclear power program. And if we would talk to Korea, I mean, we can do it on an even keel. Korea is not like much more mightier than the Netherlands is because that's also one of those things. They say, well, we don't want to be dependent on Russia or China or the US. Talk to, talk to South Korea. Or, well, talk, talk to South Korea. I mean, they are very experienced. They know how to build big things, not just nuclear reactors, but also ships, for instance. So they have a lot of expertise, and you you can you you can exchange people with you can exchange people with South Korea, and help them you know develop some some kind of extra flood protection stuff or whatnot. That's something we Dutch generally very do very well, and we can get some pro project managers over from Korea and help, get them get them to look at our our case and and help us develop it. But we could also work with with Arriva or NG or you know for my, I, I wouldn't mind if we would say well let's build an EPR, look at look at the lessons from Hinkley C, go to Arriva and talk to them and say listen we want the finished product, we want the finished product we don't want to alter any th stuff once we want to build it in here, and you know. Give us the project managers from Okuluoto and Flamanville and perhaps get in some Chinese guys who worked on uh, now I'm uh, Taichan, uh, Sunnen, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm mixing them up at this moment. In, in any case, get the project managers and buy the product. Don't buy a project. Because that's one of the things I, w I was talking to Tur to Kirsty Gogan for my documentary, and that was one of the things that she said to me, which really resonated, was don't buy a product, or was don't buy a project. I mean, you want a finished product. You uh, you want a finished design, a product which can be mostly manufactured somewhere else and then basically installed into the blueprint that you've built. And by blueprint, I'm talking about the building. I'm not talking about all the, you know, I'm not talking about all the mechanical stuff that's in there. Well, it's not really mechanicals. So I'm talking, so basically what you need is you need a blueprint for the building. This is the kind of building that you need to build with these kinds of tunnels and this kind of stuff. And then we come in and install the product, you know, install the the components, and that's basically it. So I believe that we can build an EPR within five years. If we really want to, we could do it, but it's just as... It, but since we Dutch are n not really experienced in building nuclear reactors, I don't think that that's in the cards. Even though there might be stuff that we can do to get it there, um, I think that if we commit to nuclear energy and buy an EPR from Mariva and start building it, that it will take up to 10 years. It will probably take up to 10 years, but that's okay. We should start building it. We should start building something. I mean, um, and if not the EPR, if we suppose that we say, okay, we will consider nuclear, but on a on a longer time scale, we don't necessarily want to build one right now, but we want to start building one in five years or start building one in ten years. Um, yeah, you could you could for instance talk to terrestrial energy or you can talk to Thorcon Power or you can talk to Copenhagen Atomics or or Terra Power or Oklo. I mean there's or New Scale. I, I don't care. I'm 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 pretty much ambivalent to all the technologies, although I'm I'm pretty much in favor of molten salt reactors, but if 
my country would choose for a pebble bat reactor or a solid fueled uh, new scale react I would be down with that I would be totally down with that but the point is we have to start the, we have to kick we have to kick everything into gear the, the cogs need to start turning again and we need to uh, consider nuclear in a new light I think that there's a possibility here um, we might be able to get the Dutch to consider nuclear and we might even get to a point where we might say yes we will build a new reactor within I don't know a time scale of 10 or 20 years but it's going to be a long road and it's going to be a lot of back and forth and many people are going to raise their objections time and time again and we can refute them time and time again but uh, the most important part is getting critical mass and that's 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 the thing that I always say about nuclear energy it's not just inside the reactor that we need to create critical mass but it's also outside the reactor we have to create the fundament we have to create the foundation upon which we can build a nuclear reactor and that's not a, a foundation on solid bedrock it's a foundation of people you, first of all you need the public to be in favor of nuclear then you need the politicians to be in favor of nuclear and you need and then you need to invest in the best project managers the most experienced builders and get the ball rolling but it's going to be a tough and long haul so i wanted you to see these these newspaper clippings that i have so this is all uh volkscon stuff and um, this is a guy who built you know windmills in south africa and uh, he's he's telling well um So he is very happy about his windmills. It's, you know, he built his stuff in Kenya and South Africa and I don't know where. So, yeah, this one doesn't say anything about nuclear energy. This one says something about nuclear energy, but it shows you Hinkley Point C, which is naturally going to be. Um, uh, So this is, well, it basically says uh, the K word isn't a taboo anymore, which means can energy, which is the same as nuclear energy. Um, nuclear energy went from big promise to public enemy and back again. Climate, climate targets are important. Our climate targets are possibly unattainable without the building without building a new nuclear reactor but the fear of nuclear catastrophe is still alive so that's that's basically the text that's basically basically the text here and um, yeah so the point is that some people well, it's it's pretty good. It it has you know it's it, it's so if we look at this here for instance, all right. So what we see here is uh, is pros and cons, it's pros and cons. So let's let's just read the heads, right? It says arguments in favor of nuclear energy. The first one is very clear: climate targets will be reached it's a constant source of energy and nuclear energy leads to little death <clears throat> and the final argument in favor is alternatives are filthier then there's uh, four arguments against nuclear it's uh, nuclear power is expensive uranium will we will run out of uranium uh, nuclear nuclear waste is a big problem and if it goes wrong it goes wrong catastrophically that's basically what it says here so yes it's 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 be, it's becoming a it's becoming a, um, a, a a point of discussion 
Uh, so here, this is the opinion. These are the opinion pages. It says our climate uh, <clears throat> policy can can be so much more rational and effective. So let's see. It's time for a cold look on the on the energy transition. It's by Marco Visser, who I know is a uh, he is pro nuclear, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Uh, in any in any in any case we have the you know in any case if we look at our neighbors germany with about i believe 80 million people which is about four four and a half times as much as the netherlands have they have sunk 500 billion euros into their energy vendor or the energy transition and they have hardly made any progress since 500 billion euros we could we could decarbonize the netherlands 20 times over with 500 billion euros we would even have enough have enough capacity to create fuel for all the countries around us so yeah i mean it's clear to me we need to we need to step up our game and make it clear to the people you know in the netherlands that that investing as much money into renewable energy as the germans have done well we well we will basically never invest that much money because we don't need it but to the same extent if we would do the if we would do the same thing as germany has we already have a precedent we won't be eliminating our gas we might be eliminating some coal but we wouldn't be decarbonizing our economy nearly as fast as we would do and yes it might take 10 to 15 years to come to a finished product and build a nuclear reactor that's true um it doesn't mean that you don't have to do it i mean the windfall is enormous you can build a reactor which has a normal lifespan of 60 years and can be extended to 70 or 80 or perhaps even 90 years uh, in the meanwhile you would be building the same infrastructure and renewables over and over and over and over again so yes there's enough arguments in favor of, of nuclear energy especially in the netherlands but it's going to be a tough cookie to it's going to be a very tough struggle and um, it's up to us to uh, make it happen thank you all for watching have a nice day